A good evening, this is the Nerd as the Human, and welcome to this Games Guard edition of Rome Total War, where today we will look at how to edit the campaign map, which, as ever on these guides, is surprisingly easy to do. Now, you may be interested in creating your own regions, but we will look into that in a follow up video. Consider it a part two, if you will. Today, we will focus on making small and simple changes to alter the map, and of course, when applied on a larger scale, this can lead to you making your own map entirely. But let's start with some baby steps, and to do that we'll look at the Alexander expansion, because this is in dire need of a few map tweaks. As you may know, I have created a guide for playing as India on this game, but unfortunately it's not actually an accessible region on the map at all. We can remove the trees and the cliffs down south, this will allow a naval approach. We can simply add a couple bridges onto the river, but that's not the only problem. Alexander is a nice example for this really because it was always a little restrictive and we want to open up this campaign a little. So for example, many cities physically block the route to the next town like a senseless Snorlax forcing you to play as Alexander, forcing the roleplay, conquering each city along the guided path as you march eastward. Even the northern routes are inaccessible with no bridge along the river north of the Caspian and a huge forest along the north of the Black Sea. So let's get into the files to fix all of this. And don't worry, we'll also take an example from the main Rome campaign later in the video. From my Steam library then, I've headed into Rome Total War Alexander, which should be a separate game to Rome if you've got the same edition that I have. Either way, from there you need to head into Alexander, into Data, and down to the World folder. From here, you can select Maps, Campaign, Alexander, and then the first thing we need to do in here is delete this file here, map.rwm. Don't worry about it, we have it deleted now, but it will regenerate as soon as you play the game. But we need that to get rid of the original memory of this map. So what we need to do now is change the map, and to do that, we're gonna head into this file here, map underscore features dot tga. Here is our lovely map then, and as you might well imagine, each square is one of the squares on the campaign map with the blue over here suggesting the rivers, with the white dots as the source, which helps the game have the flow of the water. As you might imagine then, the teal dots here are the river crossings, and the yellow, in case you're wondering, are cliffs. These are basically impassable terrain of sorts. And you can see there's a slight issue with that down at the bottom of the map. So just to start off with, we'll just remove some of those cliffs, get rid of all of that nonsense. And of course we want to go and add ourselves a couple bridges over in this part of the world near India. Now I'm doing this on Photoshop but I do know this works on a few other programs. Hopefully it's still fairly accessible for you. And we're going to grab our pencil and just add in a couple river crossings. Let's add one there and add one about there as well. Now, of course, we also spoke about some of these issues in the north. So I'm going to add a river crossing here and here as well. That means that now we can get across those other two northern sections of the map, which were previously problematic. And as simple as that, we now have ourselves some river crossings and we've opened up the map just a little bit more. Back inside the folders and we're going to edit the file underneath it map underscore ground underscore types dot tga. With the map open then you might well think it looks like an absolute hot mess but it's a lot simpler than it looks. Of course the red here is the sea with the white being the beachy approaches so you might well want to change up some of the edges to make more of the coastline accessible. But of course we also have some other colours here to pay attention to. The black is just arid desert with some other shades causing vague differences to the terrain, which by and large don't make a huge difference to us. But the ones that do are these dark green patches, because those are the thick forests that we can't pass through. And there's a few like the north here and down in the south of the Caspian that do cause a few problems in terms of, well, just accessing the map the way you might well want to. So we're going to zoom in a little bit closer. We're gonna start right up at the top, because what I'd like to do is fix up this section over here. So if you take your little eye catch tool, you can grab one of these colors. I guess we'll go with the lighter forest. This is still trees, but it's not gonna be as thick. We can still pass through it. So if we just want to clear ourselves a little bit of a patch through these trees, 
Maybe you want to go for a touch of this lighter color as well. Why not? We can just have that just phase in a little bit closer like that. Absolutely wonderful. And you might want to do this in other areas as well, but there are a few that I really want to focus on. And for this example, let's just make sure we open up this patch down here. Make sure we can get through all of this because I find this area rather irritatingly blocked off. So we're just gonna cut a little hole through all of those sections. And the last thing I want to do, last thing is just to add in some of these coastlines because yeah, a lot of this is very inaccessible. So let's just change this so that we can now approach more of this coastline. And probably a key thing to do with that in mind is go down to India, which of course was always very, very inaccessible between those cliffs and all these forests, we do need to just slightly freshen this up. So I did just get myself a good block of white there. Let's just be careful not to do that. Let's just leave that last little corner. We do of course want to change some of this color over to that, just to make sure, there we go, that that big thick forest isn't completely blocking our path. Beautiful. So we'll save that up and we'll reload the game. Here we are playing as India then, and you can see we've got ourselves a couple little river crossings here. And actually the road has organized itself to follow the crossing, which is just lovely, isn't it? You see down here, yes, that big forest has now been cleared and we have ourselves a much more accessible coastline in terms of the boat. We should have a lot more of that around the map as well. Yes, you can see here this path now through the forest. There's even actually a road along this bit here. So yeah, we should now be able to actually pass through all these different sections of the map. We've got ourselves a little river crossing. Just worth bearing in mind, you can see here, potentially a problem with this, that there is a thick forest the other side of the river. So you might want to go back and cross-reference some of the map. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to record exactly where you might have a little issue like that. But yes, there's a river crossing up here. Maybe that would look more natural elsewhere. But either way, you can see now that these problems have been fixed. Let's go and take another example though from Rome Total War. To make these changes for Rome Total War, we do have a slightly different file path. So we're gonna head inside data, and from there, inside world. Enter maps, and from there, we're gonna head inside the base folder. Now, from here, you'll find the same set of files that we saw before. We, of course, need to delete the map.rwm, and we want to go and change the map features and the map ground types. But let's head into the map features first. Back inside map features then, and you can tell this time we've gone for a slightly mad volcano wonderland down in the bottom of the map here. Yes, Petra and Damartha are going to be surrounded with this lovely river and volcano system. Now, there's a few things though, just to simply bear in mind, and I have put a little link to a really useful blog post in the description which will help you understand some of the general rules. But just to make a very quick point, basically these rivers can't have a diagonal like this. That would make it get a bit confused and not work, and they need to have a starting point somewhere along the line. But aside from that, the only other thing you should probably notice is that the volcanoes have some distance between them. Now I put them at this spacing because otherwise there are graphical glitches. If I swing way across to the west of the map, Right in this bottom corner here, I'm just going to have this as an example. Show you what happens when it's right next to the river, and also what happens when you line up volcanoes next to each other. But there is more we want to do yet. You can see here, this is the ground type maps, and generally, generally these desert areas here in the southeast are very much this black colour here. Completely arid desert, but obviously I've given it a nice green squiggle here. You can see that they are much more like the sort of things you see in Northwest Europe. Indeed, this means we're gonna have ourselves a beautiful, beautiful green patch over here, but it's not quite as simple as that because it's all relative to the climate. So just to show you an example here, I've got myself the dark green trees, which you normally see in the forests of Northern Europe, but, 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 I've added that down here as well as another little example. It's not gonna have the same effect if you don't change the climate. So onto the climate map, you can see here that I've given us this nice orange. Normally it's this bit here of Northern France. So that kind of temperate sort of area. 
So I've splashed that over here and I haven't over in this part of the world because it will show you that the, uh, yeah, the climate is also important to affect the types of trees we see in the ground types. And the last thing I've done is just added in a tiny, tiny bit of hills on map underscore heights.tga just to show you that you can affect the hills as well. I've not really gone overboard with this. I've just done a small example here to show you that it's possible to change the map around. So we've changed around a few of these documents here, obviously deleted the map.rwm even before we head back into the game. So we'll save this all up and we'll see how this looks. Oh, don't we look resplendent here in Arabia. Oh, it's a glorious, glorious thing. Lots of greenery, rows of volcanoes to block the way to the great city of Damartha. The pearl in the Rome Total War map. Indeed, Petra actually is completely inaccessible unless you walk all the way around. Unless you get a boat, of course, would finally make these ports actually useful. But then, yes, you can see that we've got ourselves all those changes in place here it looks lovely a few little things this didn't happen before so this is um quite recent that this little problem here has happened so yeah there are always a few things to check and just tweak as you go along indeed a few little bits just not quite matching up over here but if we head over to this part of the map yeah um because we didn't change the climates the trees have no idea what they're supposed to be so we just have a big shadow we can get those other types of trees. You just get yourself a sort of desert palm situation. And uh, yes, a few hills sitting over here. Not quite the same mountainous kind of thing, but a few nice hills nonetheless. Now, if we uh, look at the volcanoes here. Yeah, they don't like being lined up right next to each other. That distancing of two spaces works nicely, but uh, you do need a bit of space next to the river as well. I found the game runs fine, no issues with that. It's just graphical glitches on the whole. And my assumption really with the mountain here is that I haven't really changed the climate at all. Um, but I have obviously managed to create myself lots and lots of hills. Perhaps that's something we'll look at in more detail in another video if people are particularly interested. But you can see here, obviously I have stuck with the essential Rome Total War map here and I have been fiddling around a bit. But you can see here how essentially you can create your own map entirely if that is what you want to do, particularly when we have our follow up video on creating your own regions. That's all for now then ladies and gents, thank you for joining me on this Gamescom edition of Rome Total War, where indeed I got just a little bit carried away with the old volcanoes, but that, I think that's kind of the joy of modding, sometimes you just get a little bit more into it than you originally planned, and I certainly had a good bit of fun making this video, one that I've been planning to make for quite a while now, so I'm glad to finally get around to it. Do let me know in the comments below what you get up to with this, because I'd love to see indeed some screenshots as well of some of the madness that you create. If you're in the Discord, there should still be invites on the community post if you want to go and join that. Go post them in there, it'd be very interesting to see what you all come up with. But before I leave you, I will just point out that these volcanoes can apparently erupt. Certainly the blog post that I have put in the description does suggest they can erupt at random times. I'm yet to see it myself as I flip for the end turns, but if I do, we'll probably see it in the thumbnail. But for now, I will leave you. I am Thomas, this is to Nerds to Human, and this has been a little guide to modding the maps in Rome Total War. Thank you, and goodbye. No! Not again! How did you lose to the archers? Anyone who's already got children, they've just been killed. Filthy pilchards, the lot of you. Oh, <laughs> Steve! You were the best of all the Steves. Rum, pa, 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 pa.